What's going on everybody, ladies and gentlemen, Simply Pops here, and today we're going to be talking about iOS 14. So today's the day, we're going to be talking about the features and whether or not you should update. iOS 14 will be compatible from the iPhone 11 all the way down to the iPod Touch 7 generation. We're also going to talk about iPad OS 14, so stay tuned towards the end, we're going to be talking about that too. Now one of the highlight features of iOS 14 has to be the widgets. Widgets are brand new, breath of fresh air to iOS. You can now add them to the home screen. So adding a widget is as simple as tapping on any space on your home screen. And you tap it on the plus icon on the left side, on the top left, and then you can search your widgets. Now soon, we're going to be seeing some third-party widgets once the developers optimize their widgets. So let's say, for example, I want to add a podcast widget. I could do so. And then I could change the size of that widget. You got a two by two platter. You have a two by three platter. You know, you got the small, medium, large. And then if you want to add it in, you just tap on add widgets. And boom, it's going to slap it right on there. And it's just as simple as that. Now you tap on done and everything is locked into place. Now, of course, you still have your spotlight on the side. Of course, if you want to launch the widget, you just tap on it. It's going to take you straight there which is pretty cool. You could tap on the podcast and it's actually going to play that podcast. So let's say for example, it's going to automatically play that podcast. Of course, if you tap on play. Now, if you want to remove a widget, you tap on hold it and you could just tap on remove widget. And it's going to restore back your icons on the bottom, which by the way, this is a widget. This is the Siri suggestion widget. You have the ultimate widget of them all. You have smart stack. Now, Smart Stack is basically going to automatically rotate the widgets. You have your photos, you have everything. And I know the photos sometimes could be a little embarrassing to showcase. There's a way you can hide each photo. I'm not really about that life, though, showing my photos on my home screen. But um, you can do so. And I believe you can customize the stacks, too. So you can uh, change it to photos. You can have it all the way down. I wish there's a way you could remove it, but I cannot figure out a way to remove it. Flick through the widgets just like so. And if you want to launch it up, you tap on it, pinch and zoom. And if you want to hide the photo, you just got to tap on the share widget and you want to remove it to featured photos. So once you do that, it's no longer going to show it and it's definitely going to be a good time. <laughs> but look, it's showing more photos, but this is not a bad photo. Now, the dots on the bottom are now interactable, so you can now flick through them and quickly go through your app pages. Or even better yet, you can customize your home screen by tapping and holding on the empty space and then tapping on the dots on the bottom. And now you can edit your pages. So you can hide certain uh, pages. So let me do that again. So you just tap on the checks and now you can hide those, those pages. So it's not even going to show on the home screen. It's pretty cool. And if you want to add them back, you just reverse those steps and now they're back on your home screen. Now, if you have a lot of applications, sometimes it could be a pain searching for them, especially if you mix your apps around, you download some more apps. This is where App Library comes into play. App will automatically categorize your applications. So you have entertainment, social, creativity, et cetera, et cetera. So now you can search your apps just like so, just like on the Spotlight. This is a nice clean interface compared to the Spotlight, but I like the folders here because you can now see your recently added. And you can see all your apps that I recently downloaded or what you recently downloaded. And of course, if you want to tap on the application, you just tap on it. And it's going to launch right up. It wouldn't be an iOS update without brand new wallpapers. These are the new wallpapers on the top here. So these are the three. Um, also, you have some classic wallpapers that have a uh, dark mode. So this is that's that. Now, one of the most requested changes to iOS is to set default applications, and you can finally do that on iOS 14. So I'm going to take it to the settings. This is the settings application, and I just went all the way down, and I'm going to look for Chrome. Chrome is here, and now you have an option now where you can set default app. So yeah, so now the default app is Safari. I can switch that up to Chrome. So any link you tap on is going to automatically open up in Chrome. There's a message here. I'm going to tap on this link. It's going to automatically open in Chrome. It gave me that little warning that it's going to open up in Chrome. Um, I wish maybe Apple would remove that warning. But yeah, now you're on Google Chrome default. And same thing that goes with mail clients, but Gmail and Spark is currently not supported for me. Uh, maybe you got to wait for another update. But 
the iPhone finally has picture in picture. So now what that means is, let's say for example, you're watching a video, let's say we wanna watch this, and of course there's an ad, um, we're just gonna swipe up, boom. It is gonna pop it right in, and you can resize the window, make it big, make it small, and you can interact with another application. So for example, I can go into Instagram, and I can still watch Twitch at the same time. And at any point, I can hide it on the side, and it's still playing in the background. Take notes, YouTube. It's still playing in the background, and of course, I can stop it. I can pop it back in, and it's going to launch it right back on Twitch. And it gets even better because you can now use FaceTime using Picture in Picture. Also, you have the banners on the top. So any phone call you get is going to be like a notification size. Very handy. Very handy to have. So you can still... Use your iPhone, still launch up an application, and still get your phone call. So you're not restricted to either answer or end the phone call or decline it. I'm going to answer this phone call or this FaceTime. So you're on a FaceTime call. You Now you can swipe, and boom, it pops it into a picture-in-picture. Picture. Of course, you can resize it, launch up another application, and keep in mind, you're not paused. You're not paused yet until you swipe it on the side. So I can still see the other person, and the person can still see me. And I'm still on Instagram, I could be on any application, and if I move it to the side, that's when I'm paused. So, yeah, <laughs> this is so sick, yo. <laughs> this is gonna definitely make a lot of people happy, and I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna love it. If you FaceTime a lot, or you like to watch content on your phone, you're gonna love Picture in Picture and the uh, banner as the FaceTime, and I don't know, all these features you guys are gonna love. Now, at any point, if you use your microphone or camera, your iPhone is going to tell you on your control center. So recently, I just used the microphone, and that goes for any application, Instagram, YouTube, whatever the case may be. Now, taking over to messages, I'm going to have to do some blurring here, so definitely pardon me for that. Apple has taken another step forward to the messages app. You can now pin conversations to the top. So for example, you love this group chat so much, you're getting spam on the other group chat. You can now pin them all the way on the top of the application. So, for example, let me pin my boy Thomas Jones. So, there's two ways I can do this. I can either tap on edit and then I can tap on edit pins. So, edit pins, you can now pin it just like that on the top. And there it is right there. So, pinning conversations makes things easier to just quickly interact with that conversation, interact with that person with no problems. Also, you can tag contacts and messages. So let's say you're in a group message. You can now tag that contact to indicate that you're talking to, you know, X, Y, and Z, you're talking to Sam, for example. So I like that a lot because now in the group chat, now it's like, oh, who is he talking to? So now you can tag that person. Now you can reply to certain messages. So if someone asks you a question and then somebody else is talking about something else in the group chat, which can be annoying sometimes, you can now individually respond to that one text message in that group chat. So I could tap and hold and I could tap on reply and now I can reply to that single text message. So this is very handy for mass text or group text and I could do test again and now boom, we're talking to each other individually. Now, is it still going to be in the group chat? It is, but now it's more organized, but you're still in the group chat. So. If you win group chats, you're going to love iOS 14 all in all. Now taking it to the photos application, you now can change the aspect ratio on the grid. So right now everything is squared. Now you can have a true aspect ratio and everything now is zoomed out as true to its ratio. Um, me personally, I like the squares. It just looks better. But you can now do that on iOS 14. Very simple, I know, but it's there. Now, one thing that was always annoying to me when using the photos application is when you hide photos, but it only hides on the camera roll. All somebody got to do is go into the hidden right here, and then you can see all their photos. But now on iOS 14, you can now completely hide the hidden's folder. But it's no lock, it's no face ID, it's nothing like that. So in order for you to hide the hidden's folders, you just got to go into settings, and you're going to have to go into photos. Where's photos? Photos. And then boom, hidden album. So you can check that off. And then now it's gone. So thank you, Apple, for adding that in. Now moving on to the camera application, you now have Quick Take on the iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max. 
quick take is basically a feature where if you're on the photo you can now hold this and now you can record video just like that so quick take and then if you want to lock it you just slide your finger to the right and now it's locked and also to go along with that if you hold the volume up button you activate quick take and now you can record video just like that you couldn't do that before and when you let go it saves a video just like that and also to take better nighttime photos you have um, some advancements to night mode well not really advancements just ways to easily take your photo but it has like a little level every single iPhone can now switch resolutions on the top right corner so you can switch between HD 1080p 60 frames per second 24 frames per second every iPhone can now do that it's not just limited to the pro or the iPhone 11 there's just so many features to cover on iOS 14. It's just insane. You have cycling routes on the map application. Also, you have the music application. You can see the logo has changed to a red. Um, and even the interface slightly tweaked, not too much. When you go into search, I realized they copied Spotify and have this little grid here. So you have all your genres of music, just like that. It remind me of Spotify, though. So many changes, guys. My favorite feature has to be where if the music application crashes or you your phone dies or whatever the case may be, your music is automatically going to resume right when you launch up the application, the music application. So, for example, let me play this. So, it cancels and then when you open it back up, it's not going to automatically play, but it's going to pick up where you left off. And then when you tap on play, you back where you left off. Now all of the same iOS 14 features are pretty much on every iPhone. This is the iPhone SE, so it don't matter the screen size or the device type. If your device can support iOS 14, you will get these features. Now switching gears to the iPad. iPad iOS 14 has been a slightly underwhelming upgrade. If you don't have the Apple Pencil, this is not going to really be a big upgrade for you. But if you have the Apple Pencil, then you might like iOS 14 or iPad OS 14. So first feature, we have Scribble, so I can, well, I have Scribble off, actually. I didn't like Scribbles. I turned it off. I didn't, I didn't like it. So now you can Scribble any text box. So for example, I can go into Notes, and I can be able to launch it up just like that. Oops. See, this is why I didn't like Scribble, because you have to Scribble it. And that goes for any text box. You can Scribble any text box, and then it's going to convert it into text. So for example, I have YouTube. I'm behind the camera, so <laughs> don't mind my handwriting. And sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. Maybe it's just my handwriting, but, and there it is. Also, you have uh, convert to text. So, for example, you can now have that as a text. So, I can tap and hold this, select it like text, and then I can copy it. So, yeah, so you have so many good features. You can convert it into text. You could do a lot of things with the Apple Pencil, but other than that, you're getting all the features, the same amazing widgets, but you cannot move the widgets anywhere on your home screen, which is unfortunate. I wish I could have had my, you know, I wish we had the weather application. That would have been nice to have on iPadOS, but I wish we could be able to have the widgets anywhere on the home screen, not just on the left corner. But unfortunately, that's just how it is. Same features as iOS 14, but just on the larger scale. And of course, with those added benefits of the Apple Pencil. Now, I've been using iPad OS 14 on my old school iPad, my classic first generation iPad Pro in this beautiful rose gold color. Occasionally, not all the time, occasionally, and it performs well. So if you have a older iPad, you're not going to have any problems with iPad um, OS 14. So overall, is it worth upgrading to iOS 14 or iPad OS 14? I would say wait for at least iOS 14.1, you're going to get more features, you're going to get uh, you know, more improvements in terms of the speed and the bug fixes, which by the way, occasional bugs, occasional hiccups here and there, but it's been fairly smooth, fairly smooth I would say for the most part. But honestly, wait for the point one update, it's always the better. If you need those new features and you're tired of the same old thing, iOS 14 is definitely going to be a breath of fresh air. Make sure you guys thumbs up the video. That helped me out tremendously. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. And comment down below what you guys think about iOS 14 slash iPadOS 14. Alright guys, until next time. Peace.